Thank you very much for coming this afternoon. We are very lucky. We have Rob from Beam here who's going to tell us all about how we evolve our backup strategy with Beam and AWS. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. How is everyone's day going? OK? Great. So the main message we're going to drive here is around Veeam's adoption into AWS and how our, how our relevance has really taken us to where we are today around the hyperscalers, around the cloud strategies, around Amazon Web Services, and some of the things that we've been improving along the way to get there. So who or what is Veeam, and how can I sort of describe that in 20 seconds? So in a nutshell, Veeam delivers a holistic, custom-built, ground-up architecture built for virtualization. So we're a data management platform. We provide things like data protection and data availability. And that's probably our biggest go-to-market strategy here because it's a differentiator. We don't just do data protection. We also provide replication strategies around virtual environments. And so having that, having that pedigree has really helped us to adapt to the cloud because that's where we've come from. That's our technology. So our cloud adoption for us is so relevant today. And I go through some of our growth figures that it's really, really, we're really, really embracing the cloud and, and everything it brings in terms of that architecture. So on top of that, we've also now focused on expanding our enterprise deployment. So not everyone's 100% virtualized, right? So there's a lot of physical stuff out there. There's a lot of physical windows, Unix, Solaris, environments out there. So now we've embraced that and we're bringing on support for a lot of those legacy-based systems. I shouldn't say legacy, it's not a, not a good word, So because they're, they're built for a purpose. But as we've embraced that, our cloud adoption now is helping us, in terms of the hyperscalers, being able to expand that data protection strategy into the cloud. And so we're going to go through and show a few things why, or a, a few ways how we're going to be doing that as part of the presentation. So, so as such, last year we booked over $827 million. So we're on our way to be a billion dollar company this year based on our growth. So we're very proud of what we call our MPS score as well, which is approximately 3.5 times the industry average. So does everyone, does everyone know what an MPS score is? So it's a customer satisfaction rating. So we, a third party goes around and asks our customers, or asks all customers, would you recommend this product to your colleagues, your family, your friends, you know, your associates? And so our score at the moment is 73, and it's a sliding scale of minus 100 to positive 100 as being the maximum score. So we're sitting at around 3.5 times what the industry average is around customer satisfaction. So once people, veem, once people get Veeam in, they're happy with it because it says what it's going to do out of the box. So we're over 304,000 customers here, many of those in, um, in Australia now, ANZ. We've just hit our 10,000 customer in ANZ. Um, and we've got around 70 million workloads protected under Veeam now. So that's expanding both on-prem, including the hybrid, as well as the public clouds as well. So, so most, of our, most of our growth has been, 100, well, actually all of our growth has been 100% organic. So it hasn't been through capital investment. It hasn't been through acquisition. It hasn't been through any other, any other purpose except through organic growth. So our customers have grown naturally. So as a result, we've delivered 39 quarters of double-digit growth which is pretty impressive. So that's putting us up there with the highest IT organizations around the world now. So one of, one of the best things around Veeam is, um, is around our innovation. So our, our development team does things a little differently. It doesn't look at how everyone else is doing things. It looks for more innovative ways to be able to, to, be able to skin the cat, essentially. So what we do is we don't want to say, ah, oh, well, we don't want to do this because these guys are doing it. Let's do it this way because this hasn't been done yet. And so we're driving a lot of innovation through engineering. So and we do that in partnership in complete lockstep with our customers. So our enterprise customers that come to us and say, well, you, do, you guys do this really well and you're covering 95% of our architecture, but we've got this 5% that you just can't do for us. We'll go back and we'll, we'll re-architect a way on how to do that. So we're ve our customer focus and our customer success is very, very important for us. And I think that's been a big testament to our growth. So, we're 12 years young. We released a product in 2008 that really focused on protecting virtual workloads based around VMware. So this is our pedigree. This is built from the ground up for virtualization. So our cloud adoption for us is an absolute no-brainer. So as we've, enhanced our, as we've enhanced our capability, we've expanded into other, into other hypervisors such as Hyper-V and, and AHV with, uh, with Nutanix. But it also allowed us to be able to add on some really cool functionality that nobody else does, which is, which is replication of virtual machines, as well as data protection wrapped up to a single suite. So that gives us a lot of benefits around data mobility, 
visibility about the data, where all the blocks are, but it also pr allows us to do recoveries from our replicas, as well as going back to a point in time. So in the event of ransomware, things like that, this is something that's very, very valuable to our customers because we're not just a backup product. We're an availability, we're an availability platform for applications, so to be able to protect any data in any location on any cloud. So that's our, that's our, that's our go-to-market strategy now. And so as we've moved on to the hyper-available enterprise messaging within 2018, this is about going that one step further and actually bring out and being able to provide continuous data protection of that data wherever it lives. So for example, in, um, for VMware and AWS, we can drive some continuous data protection across those workloads and extend our workloads out to VMware sitting within AWS, for example. So there's some of the things that we're looking at um, implementing as part of our new feature set. So, so how, how do we help with AWS? So when we talk about a cloud strategy, we talk about to the cloud, within the cloud, and from the cloud. So these are the, these are the strategies that we look to provide. Because a cloud, a cloud policy can be, can, be, um, can be many things. So we can reduce costs by, for example, archiving backup data out to AWS as a tape replacement. We no longer want to know, you know, you don't want to manage tapes anymore. We can, use, um, we can use archiving policies to push it out to S3 and Glacier as part of our archiving strategy to replace the tape. Um, from within the cloud, we, we acquired a, a company last year called N2W Software, which allows for agentless protection and high availability for EC2 instances within AWS. So what we're doing in our cool stuff for the, for the private clouds, we can now do within AWS now to be able to drive that holistic data management and recovery solutions within AWS. And also now, with the availability of VMware Cloud on AWS, that's something that now just plugs into our ecosystem very, very transparently to extend VMware Cloud on AWS as part of a customer's data center. So this really changes the game for us in terms of cloud adoption. So some of the ways we can do that, so being able to archive out to AWS. So AWS have got a storage gateway, and so this is something that we can download from the um, Amazon Web Marketplace, deploy an on-premise as an iSCSI target, and it gets presented to VMware either as a NAS or a virtual tape library, which we can then use to back up to. So sometimes, some, of the, some of the restricting factors when you're backing up to cloud or object storage, it's not fast. It's not really fast. But what we can do is we can spin up an iSCSI target on-premise as an iSCSI or as a um, AWS storage gateway, and then dump that out, and that can be as fast as you as the storage underneath it. So we take away some of those some of those performance impacts, and then what we do is we proxy and send that out to S3. And so as part of a backup strategy, what we do then is we can then um, eject those tapes at the end of a at the end of a backup job, because to us it's just a virtual tape, for example, and then we then export that data directly into Glacier. And so if you've got a 400 gig tape, for example, and we're only consuming 50 gig of that, we're only going to be consuming that 50 gig within Glacier instead of the whole 400. So it's very optimized in terms of the space usage as what we do as a part of that. So some of the things we're introducing as part of 9.5 update 4, we've got a concept or a we've got a scale up backup repository in our current solution, which allows you to add on multiple storage tiers in terms of a backup rep repository, and we can create a software-defined storage tier around that called a scale-out backup repository. So what, what is the, what's the benefit of that? So as you grow and your environment grows, if you need to add in more storage to your backup regime, we can just simply add in additional storage, add it to our scale-out backup repository, and we don't have to go through and modify backup jobs to point to new repositories. We know where that data is, and we can logistically manage that hierarchy of data. So we can send, we can put in some faster tiers as a part of that, and so as a part of that, we can also now, as part of update four, inject an S3 object storage tier as a part of that and provide a policy-driven framework to move that data out to S3 or to object storage. Now that could be S3, it could be an on-premise S3, um, on-premises S3 target as well via a storage tier. So for us, we, we're expanding that out and it's, we're doing it in a very, very smart way. Because what we're doing is we're actually creating um, a scale-up backup repository, but we're also being able to provide things like uh, source-side deduplication as a part of that. Object storage is pretty hard to dedupe to. But what we can do is we can do that and we can dehydrate a lot of our data blocks when you push it out to storage or to archive tier, send the blocks out to, out to object, and then we can leave dehydrated uh, metadata files behind. So it takes up a, a very, very, very small footprint. But to us, they look like a full backup. So we can do all the cool smarts around it. We can do things like synthetic full backups. We can do fast restores. We can do instant VM recovery and bring things back. So for us, for Veeam, it's all about the recovery of data. 
Is that working? So these self-contained backup files to us, as I mentioned, yeah, are very much seamless to, to, to the software and to the application. So all of our backup files remain physically present on-prem on in terms of a backup tier. But when we expand it out, as I mentioned, so the data mover, we can rehydrate these, um, we can rehydrate these backup files. Now, in the concept of we lose that on-premise metadata, we can simply just right-click and rebuild those metadata files on-premises. So if you do have a disaster and you need to fail over to the cloud, we can rebuild that so we can maintain space efficiency within the local tiers. So as I mentioned, it's also forever incremental. So we can really provide source-side dedupe when we're sending data to the cloud, which means we're only sending the blocks that we don't already have over to object. So, and they just get dehydrated then as a local copy, and so it reduces your on-prem footprint. So for, for, for environments that are looking to move as much infrastructure, infrastructure away from, um, from on-premises as possible, this is a good way to be able to do that because we can really leave behind a small footprint compared to other solutions when we're looking out to the cloud um, in terms of that. So I like, having a, I like having a local copy of backups. It's very, very important for me because if you lose your gateway, you lose your, contact, your connectivity, or you lose your cloud, you've got full re re recovery capability um, without losing any impact to business. So some of the differentiators around that, so it, it's built into our scale-out backup repository story. So this is something that we're just natively plugging in as part of our current capability. So it's not a lift and shift, it's not something that we have to re-architect as a part of that. It preserves the benefits of self-contained backup files, so we're not converting it to a different file structure, we're not changing anything in any way, any Veeam backup. Um, component. So when we, if we have to rebuild the Veeam server, we can just rebuild it using our existing catalog backup, which takes about 15 minutes, and we've got full access to those files. So it's not a, and, we, and it's also fully encrypted. So we can drive full encryption, 25, six-bit encryption end to end, as well out to the cloud, which is important for uh, for this uh, for this audience. And of course, no terabyte subscription fee. So it's built into the current platform and your licensing as a Veeam customer. The only thing you'll need to pay for is S3 storage on the back end. So. so as I mentioned, last year we acquired a product called N2W Software, which allowed us to essentially do what we do in the private cloud, but extend that out to AWS, and which is, like I said, provide agentless protection of EC2, RDS instances within the cloud. So but when we're talking about that, people say, why do we need to back up? We've got our data in the cloud. Doesn't the cloud providers take care of that? In, in short, yes, they do. They, they provide backup. They do provide some data protection strategy around that. What we do is we help fill the gaps from a compliance perspective because it may not be a one fit for all organizations. We may have different retention policies. You may want to create different strategies around your data protection to create an on-premises copy. You may want to be able to keep it in a separate geo or an instance of AWS. So what we talk about is, there's a shared responsibility model that goes on whenever, we, whenever customers put data in the cloud. So like I said, AWS does a very, very good job at providing a highly available architecture. This is, what this is, this is their bread and butter. So you know, they look after the regions and the availability zones and, they, and making sure that that, that availability is, that, that data is available in separate regions in terms of ed, edge locations. You know, they offer the compute and the storage and the databases underneath. But as the custodians of that data, it's still the customer responsibility to be able to um, spin up those workloads you know, to some extent in terms of managing that. You're putting data in the cloud. It's still your responsibility to secure it. Who has access to it? You've started to control that. It's still your responsibility to protect. It's still viable to, to things like ransomware. So if we get hit by ransomware, you know, it's just be, it, you know, the cloud is really essentially somebody else's computer. So it's really just a way of being able to offload a lot of that workload to the cloud to be able to, you still, it's still, as a custodian of that data, it's still your job to protect it. So it's still your, um, you, and, you know, as part of that, you know, you may have mandates to be able to encrypt it in flight. You know, for example, making sure that we've got that data covered and protected. So as such, so AWS does, like I said, does a really good job at a high availability architecture in terms of making sure that those applications are always going to be there. So. They do things like block level incremental backups. Um, they've got very durable storage with really low, low failure rates. So it's a really, it's, I, I think it's, it, it's a great platform for housing production or disaster recovery um, environments for customers. You know, they've got different regions and availability zones for geo, geospatial and diverse um, 
content and, and keeping that data. Things like serverless scripting with Lambda and things like that, they provide really good scalability and automation around that. And obviously all, all the APIs and the command line interfaces, you can drive AWS instances. So, But what N2W does, provides a little bit more of an insurance policy around that data set. So provides a very, very simple user interface to be able to manage that and manage the backups. It doesn't require agents into those workloads either. So everything is agentless from our perspective. So from a disaster recovery, so not all AWS instances include geo-diverse or geo-regional protection. So we can provide we can provide a lot of that um, geo-regional um, disaster recovery for you as well as a part of that. And it's built into the set. So, um, but what's most important, it's, abs it's absolutely application consistent and application aware when we drive those backups. So when we need to recover the, uh, the applications, once, like I said, Veeam is very much about recovery of applications, we can get that back. And then we, obviously aud we offer the auditing and the reporting across and over the top um, dashboarding. And it's very, very symbiotic to what ABS prov AWS provides as part of a data protection and a highly available um, strategy. So Cloud Protection Manager, as I mentioned, so it provides an operational backup and disaster recovery. It's built for AWS. So all it is is, is, a, um, is an appliance that we can download from the marketplace, and then we can then go in there and configure it, point it to your EC2 instances, set up your strategies, set up your protection policies, and, and, that, and there it goes. So it's an automated policy that we can also, um, anytime you spin up new EC2 instances, it will automatically pick them up and it'll assign, it'll assign the right backup policy for them as well. So it also allows us to be able to tie into that as part of our next release as well, to be able to push backups off to Amazon Glacier as well. Because at the moment, it's a, it's a, it's a snapshot-driven protection policy for AWS. We can then start pushing long-term archives into S3 very soon as well. And like I said, it's very, very simple to use. It's very... Um, very informative. We've got some we've got some demos over in the booth. So if you wanted to come and have a look at that, we can do that. So, but it, essentially, we create new incremental backups every five minutes, and we can bring workloads up in around thirty seconds, depending on where they sit. So, um, whether it's in the same geo zone or a different geo zone, we're providing that replication. We can also spin them up very very quickly. So some of the customers and partners that are actually leveraging N two W software at the moment. So. Um, when we went out looking for a solution around this, we wanted to one, make sure it met all of Veeam's mantras of being a simple product to use and operate for our customers. But also we wanted to pick the leading solution because right now um, we're, we're very much in the leaders quadrant and we're destined to become um, the number one backup vendor in the next year or two. So, um, so we've got some pretty big customers already under, under protection with N2W in terms of AWS protection. Um, and with Veeam, we've got a very large federal government footprint as well among, um, among customers. So we're here to stay. So like I said, 10,000 10, customers in Australia, 304,000 customers around the world. <coughs> so VMware Cloud and AWS, this is a really, really big piece for us because this is something that is part of our, is, is something is part of our heritage around protecting VMware workloads. So when this became available to us, we were all jumping for joy. So, one of the biggest differentiators for Veeam is, like I said, we can do native replication of VMware workloads to other VMware data centers. So this is something we do. It's not, a back, it's not a, an automated restore of a backup copy. This is a live virtual machine replica from site A to site B, regardless of what storage you're using under the covers. So <clears throat> this holds a, a huge key with migration journeys in terms of getting data to the cloud. So the adoption of, of AWS on VMware and AWS your migration strategies may depend on where your IT assets are sitting in their life cycle. So if you've got brand new assets sitting on the floor, you may want to use them for production, for example, and then you may want to use VMware Cloud and AWS as a replica target. So you may not want to invest in a new data center or a new, new DR site. So we've got, we've got a lot of, lots of new hardware already on the floor. Let's use that as a replica target, and then we can spin up those workloads in a stage migration path to be able to stand them up directly on AWS and continue the data protection strategy around them once they hit the cloud very, very seamlessly and easily. So we've also got synchronous replication as well coming in our next major release, which is going to be a huge key functionality for, uh, for replication directly into AWS. So, and that may, sorry, that also may mean you may use to, um, you may be able to stand Veeam instances up in other, in other geos as well of, of AWS and create a multiple storage strategy across, um, 
across there as well as, a, as an additional migration path. So when we're replicating, so um, we can replicate from VMware Cloud on AWS to the data center. So um, you may have aging architecture that's sort of two or three years old. It's still useful. We still want to use it, but we want to stand up and actually provide um, production workloads running on Amazon with, on AWS. So we can essentially do the same thing. So we can protect all of the workloads sitting on VMware and AWS and then replicate those workloads to an on-premises VMware data center. So we can provide that as a strategy. So um, we've also got the um, optional WAN acceleration built into the core product. So any sort of low, um, sort of high latency, slower links, we can actually provide some cache WAN optimization there for things like backup copy jobs, as well as replica targets as well. So it may be another use case to be able to replicate from VMware and AWS to different geos within AWS as well. So you want to scrap your entire primary data center and actually have a fully optional DR data center set up in, on the VMware cloud, we can also do that as well. So this is replicating to a secondary AWS region around, around that data protection strategy. So on top of that, we've got um, S3 capability as well to um, AWS S3. So we can also provide that as a part of an archive to you coming in update four as well. So this is gonna be a really important journey to the cloud. So we can also get the data there. And the good thing about it is because we're replicating to the cloud, if we've already got a backup copy there, when we're sending our first initial replica, we can see those replicas from our backups that are sitting in the cloud. So all of a sudden you've got 95% or 90, 95% of data not being needed to send up again as a replica target. We've already got the data there. And that's probably the biggest benefit of having a DR and a backup solution in one single product. It's not, not two-dimensional. This is fully operational backup and replica software that we can actually use to leverage the cloud and be able to provide that burst in and out of the cloud as we need to. So that's really all I had. So if there's any questions, please come and see us at the booth. Um, we've got a lot of information over there that we can give you, but um, we're also giving away um, a 250 AWS promo at the booth as well if you come and see us. So if you wanted to test this out, we can also give you some licenses for Cloud Protection Manager, which is N2W, as well, to be able to, uh, to be able to stand that up as well. So we can give you a month, basically, of Cloud Protection Manager to do that. So. But um, yeah, thanks very much for coming to see us today.